Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about various signs that allow us to understand or see if there is alien life on certain planets out there. But more specifically we'll talk about this one molecule that the scientists now believe is a telltale sign of alien life. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So obviously, if you were an alien species trying to analyze the atmosphere of Earth, you would discover that there's some really strange patterns of oxygen and carbon dioxide and a lot of other gases such as methane that seem to suggest that there is something life-like going on on the planet. The biggest sign here is of course oxygen. So in some sense, the detection of oxygen on various planets can indicate that there's maybe life. But oxygen is also produced naturally. More specifically, the solar radiation, for example, can easily create oxygen by striking the molecules of water. There's other ways oxygen can be produced, so just detecting oxygen on a planet somewhere is not a sign that we've just discovered life. And something similar is true of molecules like methane, which, for example, Titan has a lot of. But even though we've detected methane on Mars, we've detected methane on Titan, and some of it is a little bit unusual and hard to explain, it could technically be also produced naturally, without using any life or any kind of bacteria. So in that sense, neither methane nor oxygen nor any other organic molecules that are commonly associated with life here on Earth can easily be said to be produced by life. Because we've detected many of these molecules out there in space, often around various asteroids, comets, or even just in the middle of various gas clouds. And for the past few years, scientists have been actively trying to identify these so-called fingerprints of life. Essentially, various molecules that can be identified as biosignatures, as only produced by life. They've already looked at something like 16,000 various molecules, and they've identified at least one such molecule that seems to be exclusively produced by life. At least on terrestrial planets. This molecule right here, known as phosphine, has been recently identified in the study as the telltale sign of a biosignature most likely only produced by life, more specifically non-oxygen related life, that would be almost impossible to explain in any other way. So first of all, this molecule is found in many different locations on our planet, but it's found in very strange and very unusual places and produced by life, such as for example in various types of fish inside their bellies, it's also found produced by bacteria inside penguins and normally can be found inside their dung or basically their poop. And for the most part is directly associated with bacteria that doesn't really like oxygen. In other words, the so-called anaerobic bacteria that was a lot more prevalent on our planet early on when the oxygen was still not really in existence on the surface, but there was a lot of other materials including methane. But even today, the presence of phosphine is always associated with some sort of life. Either life inside the fish guts, or the life inside penguins, or some other bacterial life that eventually ends up producing a lot of phosphine as a kind of a leftover. Because for the most part, any aerobic or oxygen breathing life on Earth doesn't really want anything to do with this molecule. Phosphine is known as a stinky gas, it's also super toxic, and it's also a flammable gas, but what's I guess most interesting is that it's always produced by various anaerobic or non-oxygen bacteria that's present here on the planet and is never produced in any other inorganic way. And the MIT researchers, specifically Clara Sousa Silva, who was the main researcher behind the study, essentially tried to create this in any way possible. They actually analyzed this gas in many different ways, and she even studied this very thoroughly for about 10 years. And in all of her discoveries, she discovered that there were only two major ways this gas is produced in the galaxy. Either inside really massive gas giants through some really extreme means and under a lot of pressure and temperature. So basically both Saturn and Jupiter have quite a lot of phosphine in the atmosphere that can be detected with various probes. Or it's produced here on Earth, but only by life. Nothing else seems to be able to produce this molecule in any other way. In other words, let's just say that we find phosphine in the atmosphere of Mars. This would be a telltale sign that there is bacteria that's producing it and not any other geological event, suggesting once and for all that Mars definitely has life. 
Now we obviously haven't found it yet, but the scientists behind this paper also identified very specific light signatures that phosphine would produce that could then be detected by various telescopes in the future. On top of this, the scientists have also established a very thorough analysis of molecules that can be used in the future to identify other bias signatures as well, allowing us to expand the list of bias signatures in the near future and very likely establishing the list of molecules that could be telltale signs of life on other planets. Now, if we were to actually try to analyze the chemistry of phosphine and try to figure out why is it that only life produces it and why can it only be produced in the middle of really, really extreme places like inside gas giants. And in simple terms, it really has something to do with the hydrogen molecules that you see right here, not liking to stick to phosphorus in the way that it's created here. In other words, you need a lot of energy and a lot of extreme conditions to generate this molecule. It doesn't really like forming like this naturally. Unless, of course, it's also created inside bacteria that find various pathways to then generate this molecule in different ways. So in a nutshell, it can either be created by bacteria or in really, really extreme conditions. Naturally, it just doesn't appear otherwise. And because it requires so much energy to produce, it also releases energy and burns really easily, which is why it's a flammable gas. And the good news is that because of this study, the scientists were able to create very thorough analysis techniques for the James Webb telescope. And so when it launches in 2021, we'll actually be able to use this technique to detect any kind of signatures of phosphine within about 16 light years away from Earth. And with the sun right there in the middle, you can see some of these stars right here on the screen. So within about 16 light years, we'll be able to identify any kind of phosphine related life signatures by using the telescope's new devices and by also using the technique from this study. So if suddenly we look at the nearest exoplanet to us, Proxima b, and discover that there is phosphine light signatures coming from it, there is no other explanation at the moment. The only explanation is that there is bacterial life producing phosphine and this gives us more reason to launch a probe here to try to investigate this discovery. And so that's really one of the major discoveries coming from the study, and this is something to look forward to when James Webb Telescope launches in the future. But until then, or I guess until we discover something else, or other biosignatures, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.